This next circuit we're talking about is called a common collector circuit. It is a little different than the common emitter circuit that we've been dealing with in the past in that there is no RC and the load RL here is taken off of the emitter of the circuit, uh, leaving a current path for the load like this. You know, since all power actually comes from VCC, we're looking at a change in conductance, or G, for the transistor, which causes the voltage here to uh, the increase and decrease in voltage. Um, let's have a look at the phase shift of this circuit. If the input phase shift is like this, um, when this is positive going, since there's only 0.7 volt drop here, then this would be positive going. And when this is negative here, then this would be negative. So we have a zero degree phase shift in this circuit. Uh, next thing to look at is the DC bias of this circuit. So we need to find out the voltage at the base, and that's basically the same as the common emitter circuit is uh, VCC times R2 over R1 plus R2. And that would give us the voltage of the base. Voltage of the emitter is found the same way. We've been doing this. So that is voltage of the base minus 0.7 volts. Um, IE is equal to uh, VE basically over RE. Uh, there is no DC current through the capacitor so we don't have to deal with that. Um, R prime E is equal to uh, 25 millivolts over IE same that we had before. Alright, we need to look at a something called RE. Uh, don't mistake that for R prime, which includes this part of the circuit. So RE, what the AC sees down here in the emitter, is equal to RE in parallel with RL. All right. Uh, we need to look at an AC equivalent circuit. So let's see how the source sees this circuit. We have, if there's any RS in the cap, uh, that's pretty simple. We have now, we need to look at how the AC sees R1 and R2. Actually both to ground, R1 parallel with R2. And then we need to look at how the transistor is handled. So anything past this point is multiplied by beta DC times whatever it is. We have an R prime E in here. Actually it's part of the emitter circuit. So R prime E plus uh, what is in the emitter circuit. We have an R E and an R L in the emitter circuit. So we have R E in parallel with R L. We are dealing with these capacitors here and here, the same way we did with the common emitter circuit, assuming they had X sub C is equal to zero. So we don't have to deal with uh, uh, their impedance also. So R E in parallel with R L, or this is R E, little R E. Okay, the Zn um, at the base is equal to basically beta times R prime E plus R E, the AC stuff in the emitter circuit. Um, Z in stage. 
Now ZN stage is looking from this point, ZN base is looking from this point. ZN stage. Okay, in this case we have R1 in parallel with R2 um, in parallel with this quantity beta times R prime E plus R E and that's ZN stage. AV for this circuit um, for VN actually let's do VN instead of AV it is IB times beta DC <laughs> DC uh, times R prime E plus uh, RE okay uh, V out basically we have a transistor here that drives RE and it also drives RL. So V out, uh, this is actually RE, so V out is equal to IE times uh, RE in parallel with RL, or if you prefer, this is called RE. Next thing we need to look at is um, AV is equal to V out over V in. So V out is um, IE times RE. V in is IB times beta. DC times R prime E plus R E. And we can cancel this and this since IE is equal to beta IB and AV equals R E over R E plus R prime E. If you run enough current, if R E is much larger than R prime E, then it turns out to be R E over R E is equal to 1. Ah, great. So we have a A V is equal to 1 or a little less than 1, depending on the size of R E and R prime E. So uh, we have a circuit with. Uh, <laughs> voltage gain of 1, you think who needs a voltage gain of 1, but when you think about this one, the current gain of this guy is large. Okay.